Welcome back to our second match of the day, and it is quite a spicy one. We've got Dunlimited versus Myth. A very good match, and as always, I'm joined by our two analysts to just break this down before we get into the real meat and bones of it. So, Arya, Noctish, what are we thinking about this matchup, then? You know, this is going to be definitely a good matchup here. You know, if Dunlim do lose this, they're gone. You know, they're going to be, if they lose to Myth, to Myth they're gone. That's it for Dunlim. They're going out in groups. And I know for a T1 team to enter into a T4 tournament to go out in groups, you know, it's, you know, Dunlim have had their issues. You know, I've actually got to speak to one of the Dunlim players, which was absolutely an amazing opportunity to have. And, you know, they did mention the fact that, you know, they did lose Army and they've brought in Skipper instead. But, you know, just having, you know, they're not able to quite replace Army and this what he brought to the team. So it's interesting to see if Skipper can really fill those boots that Army brought. But from what it seems to be, they just kind of have to realize, you know, they never have another army in the team and they just kind of have to work with what they have. Yeah, and uh, Noctish, buddy, we, we seem to lost you on stream. I, I, you're still there, right, though? We still got you. We still yeah, got you on audio. You have, okay. Mate. Yeah, you have, so, mate. Uh, going into this matchup, then, we obviously need a map for these teams to play on. So, what's this map VO look like? So, uh, I think. I think, I'm not sure, so correct me guys if I'm uh, wrong, but it's the first time that we are going to see Theme Park in the series. Uh, the nature of Theme Park, it, it makes it um, a little bit cheeky to play, so we don't see it too much often being played. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, an, it's a very interesting map, which many teams have different opinions on Either it's an attacker-sided map or defender-sided. So um, I, I really am um, uh, actually interesting to see uh, how Dawn Limited and Myth, uh, for, for, and to add this for the viewers that don't know Myth, Myth has been previously team Jobless and KVM in Benelux, and they have rebranded into the Myth eSports. So I'm actually interesting, interested to see the matchup between a heavily experienced team and Dawn Limited, which, which actually kind of slipped on their previous game, didn't they, uh, Arya? Yeah, but another thing to mention, Dawn Limited are more so using more so using this opportunity just for you know testing out new players that they can replace Army, as I've mentioned previously. So using this, you know. They're not really goal. Their goal is not here to win the tournament. They're obviously it would be nice, but their main goal is just to try and find that replacement as they head into the second stage of EUL. Yeah, but I mean, you kind of want to be playing as much as many matches as possible, right? And this is really do or die for Dunlimited. They had a bit of an unfortunate circumstance here with only a three-team group. So, really, if they don't win this, they are out. They're, every team in the group gets that forfeit win off of Kittens Gaming. But Dunlimited, they need to beat Myth here and with this previous track record of that previous loss, it just isn't... It's not something that would fill you with confidence. And even Myth themselves picked up on that. As you said, they see this as an opportunity. They see this weakened beast as something they can easily slay to get into those playoffs. And taking us to Theme Park especially, it it's all just... It's going a bit crazy here. Delimited maybe bringing out something that's not been seen before in an attempt to just get this one win they need to get into playoffs. But, well... It just might not end up that way. So thank you very much, Analyst, for breaking that down. We're going to be heading to the casters here. We've got Blaine and Sham to take us through a very tense matchup. So before we get into it, what, what are your uh, predictions putting you on the spot here? What do you what do you think is going to happen? I'm assuming that's us, yes? I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know that you had been to our calm. That's okay. That's all good. Hi. Yes. Um, our predictions. Um, I'm not, I haven't actually thought about it yet. I just come into these things. I just shout at things and hope for the best, really. I'm hoping that Unlimited can win it out just so that we can actually get them still remaining in the series. But, you know, I think I'm going to go for Unlimited. I don't know about you, Blaine. What you, who are you fancy? I mean, I think anybody else on the production team know who I'm kind of rooting for here. Uh, I have cast the team myth previously as jobless. I've casted some of the players on other teams as well. I am quite a fan of what they have going on. And I'm actually really excited to see how this game goes as well. I mean, as mentioned, Unlimited are just traveling out rosters right now. And this is their final chance to stay in for these groups. And but I, So I do hope they do play well. However, just the way that Myth play is just such an exciting way. It's such an exciting like, play style to me that I, I'm rooting for them personally. Little Myth fanboy here. 
Yeah, well, I mean, we'll find out. I think the game's already ready to go, so let's get into it. Let's see what we've, where we're going to go. And of course, the guys have covered it on the desk. We're heading to Theme Park, The Limited versus Myth. Pretty straightforward stuff, of course. I think for the bands, I don't think we'll see anything too rogue. I think maybe we'll see a suggestion of the Fenrir band, just because, of course, we know how strong he has been since his introduction. Of course, is able to be played, so we'll certainly find out if that is going to be banned off the board. First one to go is Osa, and I'm not surprised to see it go, Blaine. What about you? Yeah, I mean, Osa is such a strong offering. I mean, I'm surprised to not see her ban more frequently, to be honest. She's such a nuisance, especially in my own gameplay. I've, I have started to ban her more frequently myself. She's just such a strong offering, especially on Mapbook's theme park. We have so many, like, long kind of hallways, such a close quarters as well. And there's so many, like, vantage points that Osa could just take full control of just by her presence alone. I mean, the multi ban as well is a pretty interesting one. I mean, it makes complete sense for theme park. I have seen some pretty strong strategies using the Monty, but the Monty ban in itself is always an interesting one to see. Second game today with a Monty ban, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, the thing with Monty is it's never a bad ban to have. Of course, it's, you know, sometimes it's targeted to specific people that like to bring mm -hmm. the Monty in. It looks as though the before match chat was actually waffling a little bit. I don't think they're going to go for the Fenrir ban. They've left Ooh. open. Zami's dropped away. Mira's dropped away. So... Fenrir's open. I imagine we'll see it played, of course, because you mentioned, you know, the trial and people and trial and a different roster and whatnot. But, you know, this is a stage to be trial and different strats. And of course, having the Fenrir introduced does introduce that aspect of a new operator and something fresh to try. So will appear in the first round, of course, in the in the hands of Hypex. So we'll see how that plays out. I mean, yeah, the one benefit that Fenrir has as well is that not many players have yet adapted to the way that he changes the entire game style. I mean, his gadget is quite powerful if used correctly. And, I mean, even though the defenders may not be able to use it as well just yet, or maybe they have to be practicing with their strategies, it could be uh, quite detrimental for Myth if they haven't prepared themselves with this in mind. I mean, with Theme Park being in the in the rotation for so long, there tends to be a pretty average expectation from what will be going on from this game. With Fenrir, will change that potentially just with his presence alone. I mean, it is interesting to see the top four being played first. I mean, typically you would see Armory Throne being played, so I do like that bit of variation here. But I mean, it's Theme Park. It, you are yeah. gonna have expect Defender heavy foot like map it is so strong defense like just generally it is i mean you have you do see some of the packet teams as i've said before who are able to pull through and just have that advantage just with their play style but generally as long as they're limited to play their cards right this should be an easy first half of the game for them well, we'll certainly find out. Of course, you know, nothing really happening in the first 30 seconds. Everybody's just getting a feel for each other. No spawn peaks going on early on. It looks as though the attackers are going to go for an east side take and try to clear through the cash side of things. It's generally one of the two takes you'll see. You usually see someone come from a team come from the cafe side or the cash side. It's never really that much of a split push, generally because the map is that big. Roderick just inside of cash. They're now trying to get them, make themselves a little bit of a nuisance. Hypex is struggling to pick up his utility, but it's okay. We'll figure it out in just a second, of course fresh off there, just getting used to the way the mechanics work and whatnot, making sure that they get them was ready to actually pop off later on. Of course, for those of you that don't know, they are proximity, oh, I'll, I'll, kind of like a proximity alarm, I guess, if you want to call them that, they're proximity I'll activate if someone wants to go off to go, and it looks as though Swarm is going to walk into one, but there's not one there anymore, they're just going to be picked off, doesn't check the corner, and Hypex gets himself essentially a freebie and takes the head off a Swarm, and that leaves us one player down already for Myth, but immediately evens up the scoreboard as Puko to find Rorik, so that finds us with the two opening trades on both sides. Puko seems to know that there is someone inside of Cash, can't quite connect the shot, so eventually receives some of his own. The skipper gets that kill, and that leaves with a 4-3 situation. I would still wedge firmly into the position at the top of the Dragon Stairs, but the push does come through and leaves us with three members alive on side for Dunlimited, and it's just bad to forward in this minute play. I mean, yeah, it's a 3v3 situation right now. I, I, I've been kind of working on my own technical difficulties for a second. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> I have a little bit of a high idea. Oh. I mean, the kills come. Oh, wow. Yeah, no. That was very unfortunate there from the one. My utility goes out, but so does the swing. I mean, it's a 2v2. The rest of the refrag does come through for the side of the defense. Plenty of people left alive, though. Of course, a minute left on the clock. Two versus two, like you said. And it's just kind of. 
Play for a time a little bit here, the defenders, of course. Just hold these angles, wait for the attackers to try and do something, because of course it is in their ballpark to try and unlock this defence, and they're going to do just that by opening up that wall from initiation, using the Habana pellets to make sure that they can generate a little bit of pressure. The skipper's going to go and rotate all the way around to office. Are they aware of this? The yellow pings come out. I don't know if there's going to be any intel on the fact that skippers went for the rotate, but the pushes came through. The main breach enemy, Slayers, gets the kill onto Q, and that leaves us with one member left alive. A triple kill comes up from Skipper as he kills off Slayers, and Stax has been able to all Almost get the plant down, but decides to come off of it and gets the kill anyway. Myth take the first round inside the theme park. I mean, unfortunately, I did miss a couple, a minute or so of that <laughs> round, but from That's what okay. I did see, that was qu quite the round f from both teams. I mean, you saw the refires coming through, the aggression from both, both teams here. Uh, I, as I started off, I thought, I, I thought, you know, Dunlimited Limited had this a defensive side of map. The strategy seems pretty precise. I mean, they had that ho long horizontal hold. They were pretty. You know, they had their crossfires on them. They were able to rotate back when necessary. And, uh, you know, it was looking quite strong for them. Unfortunately, there was a couple occasions where Myth just completely balls it in, <laughs> swinging in, getting those picks. And well, that is just kind of the team that Myth is. They are the team that you just have to watch your shoulders, your backs, your legs, your toes, because they will be somewhere and they will be ready to swing at the slightest sound call. I mean, we saw that the Vice second he pulled the gadget out, swing straight out of cafeteria. Like, it, it's just one of those teams you have to be very cautious of you cannot even miss a second of your time or it's just gg <laughs> yeah. but i mean like uh, you know first round get, it has to get the swing of things you know not much yet can be predicted of as of now i mean it's such a close round it was, i mean we've got the triple kill from the side of the defensive i mean it could have easily gone either way there but looking very favorable for Limited to begin with but it was just the way it turns out but i yeah. do I mean, believe Myth won, it, Myth won it out there, just to kind of back to the refrag potential there. Stax yeah. is coming off the end as well, was nice to see. I think Rora can make off a cheeky early spawn from here. I thought about <laughs> it. Has a C4, could have sent it out early, but doesn't seem to do that. Instead, just going to crack on with that setup that they're doing it and save it. Cash, it looks as though the same setup will come through from them pretty much with that extension into that area. Myth as well. Almost a cookie cutter round than what we've seen the last time. They're going to go for that cash push and try and sweep through that side of the map. They've brought along a Brava, interestingly enough. I don't think you'll see, you'll have not have seen much of Brava. Of course, it usually used to steal those default cams away. That's our main utility that she's found in the meta. Other than that, I think it could be useful, of course, with the Fenrir. So we'll see how that interaction kind of plays out. Yeah, I definitely haven't seen much of Brava. I mean, I have been a bit on a hate as recently. So some of these new operators are very exciting for me to see actually live and in gameplay. I, mean, I actually, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that comes yeah. through. I mean, already getting that intel, you, like, useful for the side of myth there. How those extra cameras could be really, like, useful for them here. I mean, theme park, so, as, as I mentioned before, is such a huge map with so many places to watch. Look and swing, apparently! Right, that is amazing entry pick from the side of myth there, taking out top dragon, that, although the refrag does come through. Yeah. Well, it's all seemed to fall apart here for the myth there. They got off a good start and then immediately lose two bodies. Swarm and stacks drop right off the back of that entry kill and Skipper is able to get himself another one. It's Pupil this time. Fall and up with Slayers and Choco in a two versus four situation and now a four versus one scenario with Skipper getting that kill onto Choco, leaving Slayers with the hopes and dreams of this round on their back. Has the DKB and has some calls left but can't do anything with it. The Skipper wants to come around and collect that final kill. 4k for them on the round after the 3k in the first round and beautifully done so far in a great game from them one apiece after the second round can we just talk real quick about how like well skipper's performing two rounds in <laughs> and man's already fragging out got three kills that first round four kills just there uh, but he is definitely someone to be looking out for here for the side of myth take him off the board and maybe it could be a bit more of a smoother round but so far he's able to get that those rotates around get behind the team just swinging in he's playing the aggression that myth are handing to them and it's working extremely well for him i mean I forgot what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be, to be fair, to be fair, there isn't much analysis in, in this, in that aspect of the game because it's just swung absolutely everything in one yeah. big fight, pretty much. So I can, I can forgive you for forgetting that. Skipper can have any heels as well. Everything 
it has just become a, a warfare of who swings first. Yeah. Because you can tell both teams here have amazing gun skill. I mean, the second they're able to get the refrag through, they are they are taking every trade opportunity they physically can, which is excellent to see. I mean, they have not necessarily have these crosses in place, but they have got players in positions where if somewhere is lost, they can get that rotate through and don't lose too much control from one player being falling. I mean, it was such a like, these like they got these holes and those rotations. They got everything that open for them that they could just watch everywhere. To be honest, it, I am surprised that Mister Doom is all the out of the defense that's going on right now. I mean, everything is open. <laughs> yeah, it is, I mean, it's terrifying. I I have a heart attack when we into this game, but. The funny thing about that last round was the Swarm actually fixed their mistake on the staircase and was able to get the kill on the high pick. And despite fixing that mistake and not falling first and getting the entry pick, it didn't make a difference to the round, they actually ended up losing it. So it's quite yeah. funny that they made that amendment and still lost a round from it. Uh, so it's just the unfortunate nature of what the late game kind of brought to that. The Swarm was stuck in from below and it looks as though we're going to see a slightly different take this time from the side. We don't really want to play into that casual as much. The last time Swarm is below with nades in pocket, of course, can use, utilize those to try and get some medical nades on the go. I'm not going to do that just yet. Hypex is still floating around at the top of the dragon staircase. Looks to try and be a little bit of a nuisance around that area. Mute, of course, Roddick has just rotated out to the top of that dragon staircase to reclaim that position that has been given up from the Fen. Rear Skipper gets the first kill and continues from the last round, and that is Swarm that dealt with. First kill on the board and leaves us with four members left alive for Myth to challenge on five with unlimited the skipper inside of the office showers. The stacks is able to at least get one back and Roddick's just gonna lie there in with hands open wide for that kill onto Stack. Choco finds another onto Norwind and that leaves us with three members versus three on either side. Skipper looks away at the wrong time and Puko takes his head off for it. <laughs> and look at that. A minute left on the clock and just about everybody's dead. <laughs> I mean, I, I've seen it previously, but just that again, siege timing, siege mm. timing. You know, if that was me, I would have looked away the second that man jumped out that window. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a one way three situation. Part is down. Leash is going to have some absolute power plays now if he wants to try and pull this back to the side of the limited. I, it's looking like a myth round, if I'm going to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it is, yeah. <laughs> cool. People get the kill, no problem. Covering the plan, easy peasy at the final part there, mid. A great round. Running out after that fried point. They just take they just take the site there. Yeah. They got quite a lot of engagements over towards the cash side and decided, you know what, site's actually free, let's just send it in, let's go for it. <laughs> and they got this they got it planted, got this you know, got the kit down and one of all rounds. Meth are Wait, two yeah. rounds in the lead now. Well, two is rounds it, to one. Despite losing their first like being the first pick. Yeah. I mean, they, they still were able to comfortably play around it, even with a man down. I mean, the refrag came through from stacks, and then it became a 4v4. And like, as you said, they noticed that, hey, there's a lot of people here in cash. And they just kind of rotated around, took sight, because there was nothing really there to defend it. Yeah, there was. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll see something different, of course. Just because, of course, the obvious is that we are going to the bottom side this time. We've been to the top floor twice, or three times even. Now we're going to the bottom floor, so things are going to be slightly different on the way that this is actually approached for the side of Myth. A couple of different operators as well, the Goyo coming along, the Solus as well, and the Valk, so quite a range of operators we've seen this one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, with, the with the utility that these operators do bring, it's a pretty, although they have been a bit of variation, it's a pretty standard kind of hold you do expect from our rethrow. I mean, the Kaid is almost... It's gonna happen every game, but unless he is banned, I do support Bandit. I would see a Kaid and a Bandit. Not so much a Bandit anymore to support a Kaid and a Mute is almost. I, I've seen a lot less of Mute recently, which is quite unfortunate. But the Soul is being such a strong operator here, especially on, on this map. But like, especially with the, like, the operators that the attacking side are bringing, I mean, this is gonna be quite useful. I'm gonna for shut Roddick. up for a second. Yeah, Ronick yeah, was just being a bit cheeky there on the door. Yeah. And it's only round pretty much. <laughs> Onto that cash doorway early on. Roddick is coming in charge at this time. Can't quite land the shots onto the Ayana of Swarm. Oh, was too close. Time. Enough shots on the reverse. And still holding on to it. Hypex this time. Going to rotate around towards office to support his teammate. And it's, it's a good thing. Uh, I think he's dropped back actually. Yes. They have actually dropped back a little bit. Roddick is not in that position anymore. There's no one inside the cash. There's no one really challenging. So Swarm can claim that if they do want to. If they have a the intel that that's free to get. Of course, remember the site is the bottom floor, so they're just fighting to get into the map at this point, and a minute's already gone. 
I mean, Armory Throne is definitely one of the strongest sites for defensive. I believe it almost has an, like, it's very strong win rate for defense. I mean, you're going to have to get those breaches open in order to get any sort of push into site. But right now, they're just kind of trying to take the control of the top four, which did not go well for them. It will get that uh, even out. The refrag's coming through. It's a 3v4. It is. Yeah, it's not 3v4. It's not 3v4 after a while. It is. A couple of refrags coming through. But they still don't have that much control. They have the advantage here. But, you know, we still see these players with Unlimited on this top floor. We still have the site control for site defensive. And, like, it is. I mean, one minute 15 left. They have so much time to play with, even still. But with the speed they're going at, it's going to take them a while to get it. And as I said, they have got top floor control now. Oh, guess they kill on to Skipper. Oh, two members left alive. Limited side. It looks as though this is going to be a myth round so far, at least. Stax gets another kill into Norwind and leaves Hypix in a one versus four scenario. A minute still left, so still plenty of time to clutch this up. C4 in pocket. Enough opportunity to do this. Spotted on the drone, though, so they have the information at least of where Hypix is and they'll like to try and claim sight off the back of it. But Choco is there anyway to get the kill and myth take another round, and they are looking to try and group Dun Limited because they are on a heater so far. A couple of rounds in the lead now, and they look comfortable. Oh yeah, I mean, that kind, nice reaction speed there, but even better so from Charco. Like, I, I'm just surprised at how these rounds are going. I mean, just there, I honestly thought that Unlimited had such an advantage. You know, they had the man, like, they were at a man, like, disadvantage. They had players down. They still had so much control, even with, like, the lack of players there. I think it was just down to the fact that Myth have that the confidence to just swing at things. The second they have any sort of intel, they play on it. Their execution is perfect inside of it. It does take them a while to get into that, but it is just because they are gathering that necessary intel. They are using their drones, they are using the utility very well, which is quite nice. <laughs> I mean, I it's expected at this level. It is expected at this level of gameplay, but I do like to still comment on it because I do, you know, as someone who's come from console, I do have to appreciate the use of simple drone. Things, yeah. <laughs> simple thing. The simple, it's the simple things that win your games, you know? The, exactly. If you get a frame from a packer, you need to utilize all these drones you're given, and you're given drones for free, so if you can use them to the best ability, then it's just utility. The amount of people that don't use drones in this game, even yeah. at high levels, is shocking. I, I, it was just showing here how beneficial having just having those little tiny boxes that go around, how useful they actually are within game. But moving forward, we ha are going to go back to what's the name? Like, well, I'm having a, an addition. addition. Yeah, that's the one. We're having an addition off a knife and a bit of <laughs> bit of a blunder, like. but. <laughs> That's okay. It happens. You're, it you're just back, you're just returning, it's okay, it's all good. We're, we're allowed a couple of those here and there. Ronick inside of Cash, as usual, been in there time and time again, has the Fenrir gadgets, the Dreadmine, the Mute Jammer, the well, my mag there, it's pretty much every everything but the kitchen sink inside of Cash at the minute to hold on to it after shop, of course, and gonna play close at this minute in time. Swan's gone below again and it hasn't really been successful with those up nades and they've tried repeatedly to try and dislodge Rorik from there using that. Usually Rorik gets to decide when they leave before that anything happens. However, late round is where they seem to be slipping up. The early round so far for the moment is not been too bad usually. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> of course, as I say that, Stax gets aggressive yeah. onto Rorik and as the Rorik gets punished for over peaking a little bit. Norwind though, is it able to at least get a refrag back and brings us to four versus four situation and that's a headshot Ooh, from that's Skipper nice. on the Q4 inside of Cash but Q is blinded and is still at least able to connect with some shots. Hypix up the back staircase, Slayers is dropped, Q Hypix is dropped stacks and that leaves Slayers in a one versus three situation. Stacks, how do you lose that man? Throws the flashbangs in, gets a full flash, runs it, and somehow still manages to lose the gunfight, which is just unfortunate. It's just one of those things that happens, I suppose. I was expecting a bit more of a rush for that lineup, to be honest, but I, I'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't get them. But just the operator picks that are coming up from the side of the attack, I'm surprised there aren't any more utility to now coming from the defences. We, we are seeing the Hawaiian play, but every round I was seeing. A, Numerous flashbangs coming out. No, so yeah. so many like smoke, so much nades. Every round without fail, myth of lobbing everything into sight. And well, so far only seeing a Hawaii in play. You know, I, I I get they probably have a strategy. They're kind of expected to run around, and it is theme park. And they they can just walk away from it. And there's so much space to work with, so much, so many places to play. But at the same time, I mean, we're very consistently seeing Hypex on those stairs, dragon stairs, just contesting those windows alone. Remind us, as useful as they are. They, 
don't have as much potential as say maybe an ADS or like an Aruna game, those kind of things as well. It would be nice to see a bit more of that coming from the side of the defensive or maybe even some uh, intel denial as well. I mean, uh, as I said, they're using a, a lot, a lot of um, drones here and they're droning every single person. Even some obs like the observation denial blocker, whatever they're called, that would be nice to see as well, just to try and give themselves a little bit more of an yeah. advantage. I mean, it is two or three. It's still very, very close of a game, and all these rounds have been going very nicely. Three frags coming through for both teams. But, yeah, I mean... Story. It's good with a win. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if this round goes the same as we have seen previously, I mean, Myth did manage to win it at the neck, skin of the neck. I mean, it was very, very close for them. They, they were able to, like, recognise, you know, where they, like, there was not many people in sight, and they were able to just rotate, get that control, and, you know, win it overall, but hopefully now it's unlimited loop for their mistakes and they'll actually hold it a little bit harder. Yeah, we'll certainly see that in just a second. <laughs> Hypix is swapped for Rorik this time and he'll be the one holding inside of Cash. Uh, they have seen a little bit of a gallivant from Rorik. He's headed downstairs on the sword to try and find as many drones as possible, but of course all the drones are just streaming in the doorway from Cash to try and find as much intel on the Hypix. So there's so many they oh are. They're all just piling up on top of them to get as much intel as possible. Of course, I'm not quite sure of how I feel about the fact that the Bulletproof Cam is still in the pocket from Hypix, but we'll see if that works out. Rorik with a nice angle from the top of the Dragon Staircase spots out that there is someone on that window, but there's no one going to challenge onto it as of yet. Hypix is stuck into the corner. He's going to just find a little ratty angle. going to try to hide away from the flashbangs oh. but it's already found himself down on the ground but I don't think anyone's aware that they're down or they're just ignoring it. Rorik finds a kill on the swarm using the shotgun of all things on Solis and there's a down player <laughs> seems to be everywhere. Norwin's down, Hypex is down but Norwin's back up now so that's been killed to Hypex. Rorik stands in the round and the floaty trying to find any semblance of a gunfight towards Hibana but someone's covering it off. Two guys three situations. One versus three is Skipper is now left with all to do but finds one on Choco and are things going to slow down just a second to be able to get an opinion on this round, Blake? Uh, probably not. I mean, Skipper is the last man standing. We've seen him in this position before. We've seen him go so close to catching it up before. I mean, the previous round we did see on this site, he was able to pull it down from a 1v4, I believe, down to a 1v1 situation. Like, just had to come off the fight in order to win it, win it through. Skipper could absolutely clutch this up. He definitely has the gun skill to do it. He has the gun to do it. He has the positioning to do it. But will he do it? <laughs> He's trying. 13 kills and 3 deaths so far. Takes a little damage. But Kuko's also down, but it's a triple kill for a Skipper. He knows there's just one left to do. Can't quite land it. Slayers comes out on top, and Myth take another round on Theme Park. That is gutting. Oh my. Genuinely thought that was going to be some like MVP reel right there. That was going to be a clutch situation. Come on, Lion. You should have just given it to him at that point. But uh, very well played for Myth. I mean. <laughs> I don't really know what happened for a solid 30 seconds of that because yeah. everyone was just dying, losing health. I, I mean, uh, again, we saw the flashbacks coming through, which unfortunately did um, mess with the Fenrir. He had to turn away to stop the flashbacks from affecting him because, you know, what am I? What am I? Thanks. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Strange. You've down in the corner for so long. He completely did I think they got naded, which is why he didn't actually realise. Because yeah. they did a flashbang and then a nade. It actually connected, but nobody had clocked the fact that it had connected or thought anybody was there to begin with. Which is why the stack was completely in cash and they had to ping the guy down for him to be able to get, get the finish. I mean, then we just, we did see, oh, who was it? The Rorik, I believe, trying to get the kill under the Habana, getting completely tunnel vision, getting that windows and stairs and everywhere else was a thing. Just wanted that kill and the vengeance for his teammate, unfortunately, was not able to connect it. I mean, it was just so much aggression, so much. Mindful, not mindlessness, not mindfulness, yeah. the complete opposite, that it somehow worked in Myth's favour. Because stupidity is what works best for them, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, if it works, it works, you know. Exactly. They, also, you know, you have to praise them as well for covering those things up. Of course, you know, the yeah. Havana's dancing and rotate with a <laughs> shotgun in their face pretty much, and they've at least been able to make the call and ask for cover from the window. So, yeah. there uh, has been at least a little bit of mindfulness, there you go, uh, while that was playing off. So, uh, it's not too bad for them. They are winning, of course, they're in a good <laughs> position. We can praise them just now, but of course, they're going on to the defense. We'll see if things can change up a little bit, and it looks as though Q is trying to change things up a little bit. So that's a successful knock entry so far. And going up to the top of the Dragon Staircase. We remember back that Swarm wasn't finding the greatest 
kind of form with that if you want. A little bit of alteration, I guess, with that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that plays out with them. A minute, two minutes on a clock, and a minute's already gone. It, it tends to be the case on theme park. You lose that first minute very early on before really the attackers get under the and they have an exceptional one player on top of the dragon staircase. I mean, I should have caught one thing real quick that I'm happy to be is the fact that, you know, we've seen such side myths, they have got that Intel Denial, they have got the Utility Denial, which suddenly my poacher wasn't able to get. Oh! That was clean! Yeah, that was. That was pretty, pretty, that was pretty that clean. Was no, I'm not gonna lie there. I'm um, <laughs> taking the head clean off of Skipper, who is the best player to find. Of course, Goldkeeper 5 dropped immediately out of the round. Choco's gonna find one back, or find another even, onto Rorik. Little bit of damage on it, Norwind eventually is down, but not out so far. But will be repeat and found. Oh, Slayers oh, finds a really close kill inside of Office and leaves Q. So all we do in a 1 vs 5 situation. Can they come find one at least to do? That swarm killed off. Successful frag, at least, uh, but will it just be an exit frag? I suspect that it might be. Yeah, I mean, if they're 1v4, Myth know exactly where this nook is, no matter how, how much of this utility intel he has. I think he could clutch it up. Could, could, it's always doable, you know, but I mean, um, 30 odd HP still is a nade. So there's still at least a little bit available to them, still has drones as well, so they could use that if they do want to. Instead, we're just going to go for the good old-fashioned face peaks and see <laughs> if it works out. There is so many cross angles being held here. Dunlamy do not want to give an inch ahead. The spotted there, Q, just decided to pull back a little bit. And they now will be cooked. Sent close, I imagine. Nope, that will go deeper a little bit, but it's caught in a Y-magnet. It's a Y-magnet anyway. Slacks with his wing. Final shot, and Myth take the round. I mean... Massive difference in this, like, this picture over here. And we saw Myth on the attack with ma huge amounts of intel coming through the drones funneling at everybody. But it seems that Dunlimited didn't really have much of an idea when the majority of the defenders were playing. I and mean, we saw that Ayana, whose entire gadget is to provide intel, just completely unaware the person sitting directly behind that door, which in these kind of like, stressful situations is just a little bit unfortunate. It just it does happen. but. That was a very fast pace round. I mean, all these rounds have been very fast. We lose that first yeah, minute. Yeah, they have. As you said, we lose that entire first minute. But that is just the way the theme park goes. You know, it takes us some time to get into this map. Get to the map, take about 30 seconds <laughs> from spawn, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, just to get everything laid out, it will take us quite a bit of the time. Uh, although I am liking the operator picks on the side of the defensive, and also the side of the attack could be useful as well. Because we do see the vigil pick in play, we did see a dokumi that has been swapped off that could have been quite useful for the vigil, potentially. But unfortunately, now without that on board, it's not going to helpful. But the mute could have just negated that regardless. And uh, with the with the mozzie, uh, I just said his name. Mozzie mute. <laughs> no, the the. the Vigil. Vigil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm having a blunder of a day, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It's, okay. <laughs> it's too it's warm. Okay. But yeah, it's it's very warm. Multi vigil combo here, which I'm expecting is going to be some aggressive roam. I mean, you, those two work hand in hand in denying these drones, uh, completely having no intel on these two operators, and also amazing guns in C4, the impacts, and just on two very strong, prominent players as well. It's going to be some bloodshed if they do try to clear this out. I mean, also we got the, the very anchory kind of operators as well. We've got the Echo, we've got Mute, we've got the Kai's as well. So it is a nice 50-50 split between Broom and like actually anchoring. I mean, yeah. on the side of the attack, it's pretty of a standard um, lineup. I don't know how much to talk about that. Yeah, I don't think there's too much. It's yeah, very I just run in the middle, but look at this. It's like <laughs> just going to spot someone oh. inside of bunks, and Rorik finds that kill onto Swarm. That's the first kill on the board. First blood drawn. Swarm is dropped. Myth finds himself at man disadvantage. Pico takes a gunfight towards Hypex and gets a lot of damage done on Dunn. Not quite gets the kill, though. He's going to catch Q, not quite paying attention as the Hopping comes into Arcade. Hypex close angle towards Arcade, trying to play for that refrag. Puko's going to find another one. It's Rorik this time, and look at that. The control was there from Dunlimited, and it's dropped away because Puko has found himself a triple kill. Skipper knows there's a player on the bottom floor, and is just going to lie and wait for the opportunity to cut that rotate from them. And I think it might be the Cade of Stacks that is just teasing that push from Split Slayers as above, of course, on the Vigil. Peppering some shots into Norwind on the Cash Balcony, and knows there's going to be a player to come from the pinch. Knows exactly it has all of the intel oh. in the head. Off. 
versus the world here. Norwin versus four members left alive for Myth. I do not see him getting in this doorway without someone coming to cover the cross angle. Oh, they are a few cool with a 4k inside of this round and Myth go all the way onto series point. That is... That was an amazing play from Mozzie there to be honest. Like, as I said, there was going to be some bloodshed the second they go for that room clear because... The multi visual combo for Rome is insane. And we did see the Doka be being very beneficial for the side of the attackers there. Able to get that call through, which allowed the Sledge to get that opening pick. And although they did have that advantage to begin with, just the pure aggression coming from their Romas there did not set, spend a single second in the same spot. But then yeah. they, well, they were in everyone's faces and they were able to get that 4K through. Beautifully, beautifully done from Side of Myth. Oh, it was good. It was a good round. It was, it really was good yeah. Round. All these rounds, honestly, have been very, very entertaining. They have been entertaining rounds, so I'm not going to lie. Theme Park can have potential to be a little bit stale just because of the way that mm. it plays. It's very kind of anchorish, and you know, you only really see, you do see extensions, but it can always feel like a little bit of a kind of, it's kind of like the days of old utility meta type style. We have seen a little bit of that with the extensions with the Lamai's and EDS and stuff like that, but it has felt like that because there's just so much action. It's all been condensed into really action packed areas of the round, and it'd be exciting to watch at least. And I think though that Myth will be looking to just close this out here. I think that they're looking just too strong on that refrag. Everything, they're all playing together. This is the difference between Dunlimited and Myth. The Myth are playing off of those refrags and then on the other side for Dunlimited they're struggling to play together. They're, they're not quite finding that synergy, which is okay. These things happen. These, this is what you're, you're in this league to do and to try new things and try things out. And that uh, seems to be the issue for them so far. Skipper's putting a performance, but so far it doesn't look like it's going to be enough as they are, of course, Myth are on series point just now. I mean, yeah, as you mentioned, I mean, Dunlimited are trialing new players at the moment and they aren't taking this tournament as seriously as some others maybe, which is unfortunate. I mean, I would like to see them at their full potential at some point, but, and as well, Myth being a very established roster, having been playing in better luck in other tournaments as well, doing very, very well in them. It is just kind of those that matchmaking, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it, it, it could still go inside Dunlimited if they take correctly. I mean, they have got the opening pick, they still have Skipper, absolutely dominating for them i mean right now he i kind of feel bad for him yeah <laughs> the 50 yeah. and six it's a performance it's a you know it's a yeah. life game let's be honest they're putting, yeah. they're putting in a lot of work there's been a lot of solo rounds that they've been really trying to pull things back uh it's not quite worth it for them though so no. far of course and you know it's never out it's never out of the possibility of course can, four rounds is technically all they need and you know it might seem like a big task to come back from this point but they can certainly do it they are a team that have the potential to do just that but damage is done onto swarm and that leaves them in a tricky situation on the thorn and peppering comes out to the at the same time at the top of the dragon staircase but this hold inside the office is going to have to be dealt with of course with the shield as they send in some habana pellets just to open up that main cache breach so they begin to push in from that east side there's quite a lot of attackers on that side and it looks as though that is where the main push will come from but it's going to get caught in a raw animation so disgusting. unfortunate there for skipper dealt with and just deleted right out of the round 15 and 7 for absolutely nothing unfortunately as swarm still wedged firmly into the office vault the shield is just not going to be dealt with there's so much utility focus on holding onto the shield and they're going to try and push and flush them out as they double up to try and do it but there is a cross angle being healthier, healthier of course swarm still sending out the shots still making them aware that there is presence behind that shield but won't over peak doesn't want to take anything they don't have to because they have their teammates back there Stax is on the other side of things holding close knows that they can just have to hold that cross angle there but Norman is just going to take Cubo's head off anyway he knew exactly where to pre-fire for it Hypex is just teasing the possibility of going through that breach but the Echo Drone is just going to ring their ears or can't concentrate on taking the gunfight the Red Pings come out they have so much information Swarm just going to chill out and wait for anyone to overpeak here the last 30 seconds so many clean shots coming through and like the, the holes and oh my gosh there's so many crosses and Choco, 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 the triple kill finishes it there for Myth, and that is it. all of it. All she wrote, they take all of the points, and they, unfortunately for Dunlimited, they put them out. That is Myth get, making playoffs for that performance. They're beautifully nice. done. 7 2. What a game, Blitz. What a game. That was an excellent spot. She's very unfortunate for Dunlimited there, but very well played for the side of Myth, and a definitely deserved win. There's just too much difference between these two teams, and it was just the way the game goes. It is yeah. just... Yeah, yeah it, is, it is. 
it was a good game. It was really entertaining, of course. And like you know, I mentioned it, but it can feel a bit stale sometimes. But they definitely didn't make it like that myth. The talked about game they did, they did mention i seen it on twitter as well that they wanted to try and group them and they do just that they take the win <laughs> to them too so it was nice to see them back up their words to get that that win there for them but of course we're not going to stay for too long and break things down we do have a desk ready and waiting to do just that so i will throw it over to them and they break things down that's us for tonight see you later bye bye i i believe yep we're back and <sighs> We've, we were robbed of an upset in that match one, but match two really delivers on it. Myth, 7 2 in Dun Limited. I personally didn't expect that. I don't think any of our analysts expect that either, but let's bring them in here. See see how they thought this whole matchup because it's uh, it's it's an upset to us all, I think. I mean, going in, we we sort of unanimously agreed that Dun Limited, they had some issues previously, but we thought, you know, this would be a, a fairly guaranteed win, especially with sort of the the significance of this matchup. We said it's do or die and unlimited, unfortunately are out of the tournament now, but let's just sort of break down that matchup. We just saw and Noctis, you were really talking about the operator picks and the way that myth was sort of playing into that unlimited defense. So just break that down a bit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, first of all, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed only nine rounds being uh, played if I'm not right. Yeah. So um it's a shame that we uh, saw such a dominance. Actually, congratulations to Tim Myth. It was kind of expected uh, based on the stats. And I will tell you why. Uh, let's go to it very quickly. So, uh, Tim Myth has a total um, um, rounds played of 314 over Benelux and the other leagues, which 167 of them has been attack wins and the uh, 147 of them is the defense win. so they are a dominant team with a huge amount of experience the only addition to the roster was uh pico uh after the benelux so i would say the experience of these players and the new blood uh pumping into the myth actually brought uh, this victory. But about the operator that you said, yes. So I want to point out in the rounds one, two, uh, and three, Fenry has been played by uh, Team Dawn Limited, and Nuke was constantly picked by uh, Team Myth. Uh, it was, I believe it was round one and two, which uh, Nuke and Fenry countered each other the round one, of course, Fenry, uh, cut off Nuke because of a lack of droning by uh, Tim, uh, Tim Myth. And uh, then uh, it was on round two, which uh, Nuke got the uh, information or the feeling that, yeah, Fenrir is going to play on the same spot. So he just pre, uh, pre fired the position. So it is important in uh, actually new siege in a new me meta to play with your uh, information uh, utilities, either it's a cam or drone, to uh, gather info as much as possible, especially for an operator like Nuke, although uh, she's kind of invisible to the cams, but still a cam uh, in front of her, like two seconds or three seconds ahead, can bring so much value and information towards the round. But uh, still, it was a questionable decision by uh, these two teams to play same operator, same place, and the result uh, was going in one round to other the and the other one to the team myth. Yeah, and that sort of mirror of operators kind of reflects the overall confidence we saw from myth going into that. And that is something that, Arya, you pinpointed before the match. So just sort of talk us through how how have you really seen this confidence in Myth's playstyle in theme park? Yeah, Myth, you know, they were confident in taking their gunfights, which is one of the key aspects. You know, if you're not kind of walking in confident, you're not going to be able to, you know, take on those gunfights and be you winning them. Sound? Have we sound production? Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay, we do. Perfect. We do. <laughs> we're still here but yeah so you know if the confidence going in with the gunfights and actually i was talking to me or to stacks as well and he did point that out to me he pointed out that you know the team is very confident and you know coming from ben Lux with the three original players and then bringing in the new player 
that it's kind of added new blood to the team. And, you know, it had, you know, they had to kind of really work to get out of that old meta of, you know, rain, running the LMGs, the Fink LMG, as we were all very much aware that, you know, that was a, quite an awful meta to be in. But they've had to over that, adapt and overcome that. And they've seemed to have done it perfectly by bringing in new players. Yeah, and it's kind of the opposite of what we were saying with Unlimited, really. They they were struggling with those these new changes, something we brought up in that pre-show, and still with Skipper in this time, they just can't get it done. It was a fantastic performance from him, but overall, it just it, it's it's a bit sad, really. They go out in this fashion. It, it wasn't with some explosive 8-7, you know, banger of a match. It was more of a whimper, really. Unlimited really going down there. But there were still some good good parts of this matchup. Like Noctish round eight, for example, you were you really had a lot to say about that round. So just bring us through that. So round eight was uh, the armory defense by Tim Myth. Uh, Echo Mozzi and Mute has been picked up uh, as a three player on the roster of Myth. Uh, when when you see those operators being played, you expect a heavy uh, information denial. Uh, being played into the rounds, specifically Mozzie and Mute, uh, with the combination of Cade, is usually to deny the information into the armory site. But uh, we saw a, a very aggressive hold uh, towards uh, Breakroom, Bonk, uh, Daker, towards Cafe, which there was an amazing gameplay by uh, it was Mozzy with uh, 3k or 4k if I if I'm not wrong, uh, which actually destroyed the, the tempo of uh, Team Don Limited. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the general pl- problem a Don Limited faced in this whole game was the utility and the information game. Uh, that they unfortunately completely missed it. So, for example, it was Fenrir in cash. Uh, Team Don Limited wasted four drones on single Fenrir, although they downed Fenrir, but uh, eventually uh, Solis played a shotgun, uh, pouring down the health of uh, t- uh, Team uh, players and operators to literally like 10, 20 HP. Uh, so, in my opinion, we saw a very poor game and positioning and communication uh, between Dawn Limited members. Yeah, and as we were talking about Dawn Limited, they are out of this tournament, but there is kind of a silver line to this. They never came into this tournament to really to win it all, right? It would have been nice, but they really joined for, for experience and to try new things out. And you know, Arya, you were saying they can still sort of take this defeat on the chin. They can learn from it. So what really would you say the next sets were done limited here? So from, you know, a loss here, it's not obviously ideal. They didn't get to play too many rounds against Myth, so there's not as much information to take away from this. But again, you've played two games, so you kind of have a lot of information that you can build on. You have the VODs, so the VODs will definitely be reviewed. And, you know, they can see what worked for them, what hasn't worked. You know, if there's players that need to be swapped onto different roles, that can be done from this, you know, the wealth of information that the Dunlimited have gained from even two losses, you know, they still have an awful amount of information that they can work with, you know, so it's it's not all doom and gloom. There's still a lot they can do and heading into you know, stage two, there's quite a lot of information and they can work super well with that and hopefully we can see a better Dunlimited coming in the future. Well, I believe we have an interview with the Victors on the way. If I can just confer with production here, so we'll get to that in a minute, but yeah, I think just the real big the real big takeaway with this is Dunlimited is gone, and that is one of those sort of big dog teams you would expect to see go far. They won that Challenger League finals last year. You'd really think going into 2023 they'd do they'd go extremely deep here, but they just sort of haven't been able to to replicate that tempo. And we do have an interview now with stacks from Myth, so we can just get that on the screen. Uh, hello, 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 Stacks. So, uh, how how are you feeling after that after that win? Big win, I've got to say. All good, all good. Yeah, and 
just uh, take us through that theme park pit because it's the first time we've seen it in uh, in Talent League here, and it sort of caught us uh, on the desk quite off guard. So, what really did you see in that map that would allow you to get this win? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it seems to have worked wonders there. Uh, the Fenrir was a, a big sticking point I saw because Dunlimited, they used that a lot, but when it came to the myth defenses, you didn't seem to be too keen on it. So what are your overall thoughts on Fenrir in general and in this matchup specifically? It was, and we hmm. kinda, we've really struggled with it, actually. Oh, we've, I think we've, okay. Bit of production issues here. Oh, can, can stream here stacks now? Uh, okay. So, so to stream, it seems like I've been doing an interview with a brick wall here. We're going to try and get this issue fixed because I really, really want to hear from the victors here, but I'll just stall for a bit of time until we can get stacks on the stream here. But yeah, we uh, we're just getting through these production issues now. But he was he was producing he was getting very good answers. I must admit, very 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 knowledgeable answers here. We just need to get them on the stream, unfortunately. So bear with, bear with. We are just waiting for him to rejoin the call now. Almost there. Okay, Stacks, can can you just speak? Can we get can we get a test here? Uh, I can hear you. Can stream production? Can production hear him? Okay, right. Okay. Apologies. Just we're just going to we I think everything is good now. I think everything is good. So, okay, just going to roll back time a bit, Stacks. Pretend I've never asked you these questions before. Yeah, yeah, no worries. How, no how worries. are you feeling after this matchup then? Cuz it's a pretty big win. I mean, I'm over the f the, the moon I said that first <laughs> word. Uh, you know, like I've already said, you know, yeah, as a T3 team, you don't really get to play officials against such a, you know, a Titan. So, just really glad to be here. To show off all the hard work we put into it and you know to come out with a victory you know i said to the boys we're gonna do it but like to actually do it that's a whole different story yeah and the theme park pick it it was a surprise to us all on the desk and we've not seen it before in the uh, titan series season four so overall just what what was the real thought process in that and seeing that and picking that as the final map well 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 um I like to predict map bans, so I put the prediction I put uh, on Twitter was almost 100% accurate, like just all the messed up. But um, so yeah, it was like really, the limited has a big map pool. So for us, we just had to compare all map pools to the limited and then see what map was best favorable for us. You know, and we've been screaming, screaming team park for a while, you know, and we just felt like if we're going to take them to a map, let's just do team park. Why not? Yeah, it, it worked. It clearly worked. 7 2 win against Unlimited. Uh, the Fenrir. Fenrir was being picked a lot by Dunlimited and not really much by Myth, but it didn't sort of fully seem to stall you at all. You were very good at dispatching it. So what overall are your thoughts on that operator and, and its use throughout this match? I think Fenrir is a, a great operator to stop the entire Latin play style where you push from different angles. You know, Fenrir, you put one there, you put one there, you activate him and it stops the push. We struggled with it a lot too. You know, that was actually really hard to like counter it. Um, so we just kind of dealt with it. And on defense, we picked it once. Uh, we changed up one of our strats before the game. We said, okay, you know, Dunlimited likes to go for this take, so we're going to bring Fenrir, and we're going to make sure that, you know, they struggle with it too. And for the underbomb sets, we just kept doing what we do in scrims. 
yeah, just if it works before, why change it? Why change uh, it? Final final point here, sort of the confidence from Aria talking with your team. You seem very confident about this matchup and overall. So overall, just how has that sort of positive mindset really kind of affected your gameplay coming into this? Because you did win this matchup. So how has that sort of contributed towards sort of the team mood in general? Yeah, you're going to be seeing some clips on Twitter because we're screaming every single round. <laughs> <laughs> Every single round, we scream and we scream and we just hype ourselves up. We give ourselves the confidence to know, you know, to play better. I mean, Benelux is seen as a region. It's very weak, but I think personally, at the moment, it's being slept on. Fair, well, fair. The, the challenge is out there. Beat the Benelux team, I guess. Uh, so finally, a bit different here. Usually I'd say about sort of the next matchup, but you're off to playoffs, so... Really, that's the, the bigger point here. How do you feel about going into playoffs, about getting very close to those finals now? Uh, we still need to beat B for seeding. So that's our main yep. goal. You know, I don't want to end up against Heroic in the quarterfinals. So, <laughs> you know, beat B first and then we see what we get and then we prepare on it. Um, yeah, that that's it really. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Apologies for the, the, the slight technical uh, issues there. But no worries, no nonetheless, worries. a very nice interview. Uh, thank you very much, Starks. Thank you, Aswell. I uh, love everyone. Thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. See you in a bit. See ya. Am I getting my uh, analyst back in? Aria? Aria, knock to show yourselves. Oh, we've lost Aria now. Hello there. Oh. Well, we got to... Oh! Still here. Hello, Still hello. here. So, sort of, a final sort of, like, unscripted points about that matchup before we sort of wrap up here. Unlimited. Where's it all gone wrong? You know, where's what's happened? Oh, there's quite a lot of points to really touch on, to be honest. You know, like again, I'm going to touch back on the wealth points that they're after getting from these games. You know, the, the adjustments they can make to the team now is absolutely insane. You know, yes, you've you can take the losses on the chin and walk away, but you can also then turn back on them and build from where you you know you can find your issues, you can find where you went wrong. You know, they can look back at these VODs, figure out, you know, that's what we should have done there, or that's what we should have done there. And hopefully when we see Dunlim to come back again, they'll be a lot, lot stronger, hopefully. Yeah, any any closing thoughts here, Tesh, before we wrap up? Uh, actually, Arya made a very, very good point. Uh, oh, Quickie, I want to ask Arya about this before I get to the final point. Uh, do you think Don Limited, uh, if there was a second chance for the Don Limited, uh, why were they able to kind of hop back and pave their way through like lower bracket qualifiers, something like that? Yeah, I feel if the, I feel if Don Limited had another kind of second kind of run in this, they could definitely you know because they've already gained the wealth here, so they can definitely you know tune up some points before if there was a lower level. But unfortunately, there isn't, so it's kind of all kind of all she wrote for Don Limited at the minute. But if there was definitely another kind of second chance for them in it, I could definitely see them going a lot further as, you know, they have been eliminated after their first two matches, which for a T1 team, 